Here's the cool question that you frequently get in the test. Kate has $33, which is only 20% of the cost of shoes that she would like to purchase. How much do the shoes cost? And you're presented with four different choices. Choice A, $66. Choice B, $99. Choice C, $150. And choice D, $165. Can you calculate the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 to 30 seconds, depending how well you are with math and percentages. Ready or not, let's go ahead and get to the correct solution together. The answer to this problem is very simple. $33 is 20% or one-fifth of the shoe's price. So the total cost of the shoes would be 33 multiplied by 5, which would be equal $165. So the correct answer here is choice D, $165. Here's the interesting question, which is easy to understand, but at the same time, you will have a lot of fun solving it. You need to calculate the simple expression, 12 divided by 2 and then multiplied on the value in parentheses, which is 3 minus 1. Take a look closely and see if you can come up with the answer. There are three operations here, division, multiplication, and subtraction. All you need to determine is which one to do first, second, and third. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue and get it solved together. The order of operations in math tells us that the first expression we need to solve is in parentheses. We first need to calculate 3 minus 1. And obviously, the answer is 2. The big question is, what do we do next? The order PEMDAS tells us that we need to do multiplication and division. But what order doesn't mention is that we need to do it from left to right. And what's interesting, the acronym itself is a little bit confusing, because it shows multiplication first and then division. But in our case, we need to do division first and divide 12 by 2, and then do multiplication. Once we divide 12 by 2, we get to 6, and the final expression we need to solve would be 6 multiplied by 2. So the correct answer here is 12. So, did you solve this challenge on your own? Was it easy for you? Please share your thought process and your solution in the comment section of this video. Here's the practice problem for you to see how quickly you can solve it. A 5x5x5 five by five by five cube has its sides length increased by 40%. As a result of these changes, by what percentage has cube's total volume increased? You have four different choices. Choice A. 221%, choice B, 253%, choice C, 274%, and choice D, 327%. Can you quickly calculate the solution? Give yourself a little bit of time, because the answer to this problem may not be obvious. I am going to reveal the solution now. The answer is choice C, 274%. Do you know how to get to this solution? Please make sure to post your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here's the cool question that you frequently get on the test. You're presented with four different letters and you need to guess the word using all letters presented. The letters we have are W, O, B and L. Can you guess the word? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Ready or not, let's go ahead and reveal the solution. The correct answer here is ball, which is spelled as B O W N L. Hopefully, you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's a cool question which you frequently see on the test. You're presented with two cubes. One cube has side length equal one unit, and second cube is a larger cube and it has side length equals three units. So the question is, how many small cubes can fit into the large cube? And you have four different choices. Choice A, 9. Choice B, 18. Choice C, 27. And choice D, 81. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a few moments to calculate it. Maybe 20 to 30 seconds. This is about as much time as you get in the real test. Ready or not? Let's go ahead and get to the correct solution together. To solve this challenge, you need to visually imagine 
how many small cubes can fit into one side of the larger cube. And the answer is that three small cubes can fit on each side of the large cube. And since cube is three-dimensional, the number of small cubes that can fit into the large cube can be calculated using the formula. 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3, which is equal 3 cube, that's where the word cube might be coming from, which equals 27. Since cube is three-dimensional, the number of small cubes that can fit into the large cube can be calculated using the formula. 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3 equals 3 cube equals 27. So the correct choice here is choice C, 27. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now I have a practice question for you. You need to determine which item comes next in the sequence. You're presented with three large squares. Each large square contains nine small squares inside. And small squares are of a different color. And the fourth square is missing. And you have four different choices to choose from. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. And make sure to post your solution and your rationale in the description section of this video. This way I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here's an interesting question you may need to know not just for the test, but also if you're trying to rent the house. Five college students together rented a house. One of them decided to move out earlier and now their rent would be $260 higher for each remaining tenant. What is the cost of the total rent, considering the rent is shared equally among students? And you're presented with four different choices. Choice A, $5,200. Choice B, $3,120. Choice C, $2,600. And choice D, $2,000. $340. Give yourself 20 to 30 seconds. Maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Let's go ahead and solve this challenge together. One of the easiest way to solve this challenge is to create a formula. Let's start by defining a variable. And we will define this variable as S, which would represent an initial split trend for five students. So, using this formula, we can calculate the total house rent as 5 multiplied by S, which means that after one student left, the total house rent could also be calculated as 4 multiplied and then the value in parentheses S plus $260. Using both approaches, we can create an expression. 5 multiplied by S equals 4 multiplied and then the value in parentheses S plus $260. Once we simplify it, we'll get to the equation 5s minus 4s equals $1,040, which means that the s equals $1,040, which represents initial one student trend. To calculate total house rent, we need to multiply 5 by $1,040 and the result will be $5,200. So the answer is choice A, $5,200. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar. Here's the puzzling question that you might frequently see on the test. The sum of all the ages of four family members is 85. What would be the sum of their ages together in five years? And you're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 90. Choice B, 95. Choice C, 100. And choice D, 105. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 20 to 30 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I'm moving forward to get to the correct solution together. What's interesting about this problem is that it is simpler than you think. So the key here is not to overthink the problem. There are four family members and some of their ages is 85. And in five years, each family member will be five years older. So incremental age increase for all family members can be calculated as four, four family members multiplied by five, five years equals 20 years. 
so some of the ages of all family members in five years can be calculated as 85, which is original sum, plus 20, which is the incremental age increase, and would be equal to 105. So the correct choice here is choice D, 105. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar puzzles on the test. Here is an interesting question, which tests your understanding of money management as well as accounting. Sarah has twice as much money as Nicole does. After Sarah loans $500 to Nicole, she will have 1.0 times as much as Nicole does. How much money did Nicole have originally? And you're presented with four different choices. Choice A, $1,000. Choice B, $1,500. Choice C, $1,800. And choice D, $2,000. And $500. Can you calculate the answer? Give yourself 20 to 30 seconds. Maybe pause this video and give yourself as much time as you need. Let's go ahead and move forward to get to the correct solution together. The best way to solve this challenge is to assign a variable to what Nicole had originally. If we assume that Nicole had originally n dollars, then Sarah will have twice as much, meaning 2 multiplied by n, or 2n. That means that after the transaction, when Nicole received additional money from Sarah, Nicole had n plus $500, and Sarah had 2n minus $500. Based on this information, we can build an expression. 2n minus $500 equals 1.5 multiplied in parentheses n plus $500. Let's go ahead and simplify this expression. We will get to the result of 2n minus $500 equals 1.5n plus $750, which means that 0.5n equals $1,250. After the calculation, we can see that n equals $2,500, which means Nicole originally had $2,500. So the correct choice here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the practice problem for you. The day after the day after tomorrow is four days before Monday. What day is it today? You have four different choices. Choice A, Sunday. Choice B, Monday. Choice C, Friday. Choice D, Saturday. Feel free to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. I would like to give you a hint. The best way to solve these types of problems is using reverse calculations. So do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure out the answer? Make sure to post your answer as well as your rationale for solving this problem in the comment section of this video. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here's an interesting question from the real test. You're presented with two cubes. Original 5x5x5 five by five by five blue cube has its size length increased by 40%, which in the picture is represented by the yellow cube. As a result of these changes, by what percentage has total cube volume increased? You have four different choices. 221%. Choice B, 253%, choice C, 274%, and choice D, 327%. The answer to this question may not be obvious, so give yourself a little bit of time to come up with the solution. Let's move forward and calculate the correct answer together. To get to the correct answer, first step in calculation process is to calculate original's cube volume. 5 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 5 equals 125. Now let's increase the size by 40%. 5 multiplied by 1.4, which is the 40% increase, equals 7, which means that the side of the new yellow cube is 7. So the volume of new cube can be calculated as 7 multiplied by 7 multiplied by 7 and the result will be equal 343. To calculate volume percent change, we need to divide 125, which is original cube volume, by 343 and multiply by 100%. The result is equal 274%.
So the correct choice here is C, 274%. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is a very interesting problem that you might frequently get on the test. You need to determine the next item in the sequence. You're presented with the sequence of large squares. Each large square contains nine small squares inside, and small squares are of the different color. You need to determine next item in the sequence, and you have four different choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe longer, maybe 20 to 30 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure it out? Let's go ahead, move forward to get to the correct solution together. As always, my advice to you, look for patterns. And determining the pattern is key to solving this particular problem. What you need to know to answer this particular question is that blue shape moves within the row of the larger shape. In each row, blue shape moves from left to right, one step at a time. And once blue shape reaches the end of the row on the right, it reappears on the left. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is an interesting question which validates how well you do planning of your day-to-day -day work. Mary spends one-third of her 24-hour day at work. Meetings take one-fourth of her workday. How many hours does she spend in meetings? You have four different choices. Choice A, one hour and 30 minutes. Choice B, two hours. Choice C, two hours and 30 minutes. And choice D, three hours. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe a bit longer, depending how well you typically solve these types of problems. Ready or not, let's go ahead and solve this challenge together. As you might be well aware, full day has 24 hours. Mary's working hours are very typical. They represent one third of the full day, which is eight hours. And we calculate it by multiplying 24 by one third, or actually dividing 24 by three. Meetings take one fourth of her workday. So to calculate how much time she spends in meetings, we need to multiply eight hours by one fourth. And the result is two hours. So the correct answer is choice B, two hours. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Here's the cool question, which tests your ability to quickly come up with the answers. The day after the day after tomorrow is four days before Monday. What day is it today? And you have four different choices. Choice A, Sunday. Choice B, Monday. Choice C, Friday. And choice D, Saturday. Do you see the answer? Think again. These types of puzzles might require you to do some thinking. So feel free to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and get us to the correct solution together. To solve these types of problems, we need to analyze them and do them in reverse. Four days before Monday is Thursday, and the day before day before Thursday is Tuesday. If tomorrow is Tuesday, it means that today is Monday. So the correct answer here is choice B, Monday. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar puzzles on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for your endorsement, support and patronage. Please also check out additional resources in the description section of this video. I also encourage you to check resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net. Please leave your feedback, corrections or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.